Hey guys, it's uh, week two of uh, putting together the uh, basics of an animatronic control project. Uh, if you remember from last time, we got the servo together and we got the frame on and the power supply. We ended up with this. Uh, this week we're going to talk about animatronic inputs that I've designed and mounting them, mounting the electronics correctly so that you have a well-controlled system that doesn't have a lot of free wires and things that can break. So in the past week I've made a mounting plate here that we're going to mount the electronics to and I have some input devices I'm going to talk about and how they work and the basics of analog input and uh, we'll see where it ends up from there. So let's get started. First rule of thumb when uh, screwing down electronics boards. You can tap plastic holes, but they tend to strip if you use them more than once. Uh, I like something a little more reliable. So if you go to McMaster Car and get yourself some heat inserts, here, this is an M3 heat insert. I also have an M2.5 for the frame card. Um, once you heat insert those, they'll last forever. It's a very reliable system, so I highly recommend it. So we've already made the bosses here. They're a little undersized. The If you go look at the M2.5, lead-in here. It's the diameter of this is 3.75 lead-in and the M3 is 5. Check that. Just about 5 for the lead-in. So what we need to do is for the M3 bosses I need to use a drill and drill it out to 5 millimeters and for the M2.5 I need to drill it out to about 3.7 millimeters. So I'm gonna go do that. Drilling the holes, drilling the holes, I'm drilling the holes, drilling the holes in the plastic. We got this done. Woo! With the holes drilled out to the proper size, what we're going to do is preset the heat inserts by just pressing them in just to get them started. And then we'll use the soldering iron to melt them in and I'll see if I get a close up of that. But first, let's get the uh, heat inserts pressed in just to get them started in. As you can see here, we have the heat inserts all preset. I'm a little glary. All right. So they're all preset. They're not heat staked in yet, but that's, how, that's what they should look like. Now we're going to use the soldering iron and melt them in. So let's uh, use the soldering iron to heat stake these in. It's very easy. Just have a fine tip soldering iron. And we're gonna pick one of these, press it right down the middle, hold it there. You don't have to push hard. Just wait for it to start to melt a little bit. And done. Okay. And you do that to each one. Make sure you get it perpendicular to where you're pushing it in. You don't want them crooked. Do the M two point fives. There we go. We have our control system and we have our heat staked insert mounts. Let's screw it down with M three and M two point five screws. Little fun fact for you, you may think this is sped up, but this is me working at actual speed. Don't act like you're not impressed. And there you have the mount. So we have the frame card screwed down nicely, the control card screwed down nicely. Uh, now let's talk about inputs and how we go about designing those. The way my control system works for most of my animatronics is I don't want to go in there and set each individual movement number by number and based on time that takes too long it's repetitive there's a better way at least for the way i do it uh that works better and that's to capture it live from my puppetry that i do so whether it's a mouth or an eye blink one thing you need is a mechanism like this so it's just got a pivot in the back open and close and on this side it has a uh, 10k analog pot so whether you're talking or you're doing eye blinks, right? The analog sensor is going to change voltage. We're going to read that into the control system and store it and then have it play that back. So that's, that's for mouths and for eye blinks, typically is what I use that for. You can use it for either one. The other one is you want to be able to move eyeballs, necks, heads, things like that. Um, I designed this mechanism running on the same concept. So this is a joystick left and right. I should turn it this way. Left and right, so it uses a 10K pot for this axis, and it uses a 10K pot for this axis. So now I have left, right, up, down combination. I can read the analog voltage out of these pots 
into the control system and convert that into a servo movement for the eyeballs for a head for whatever I want to do. So combining the two control inputs, I should be able to puppet this and get movement the, the movement that I want. Let's talk about variable pots and how they work really quickly, just so you understand why there's three wires coming off each of these. Here's your 10K pot. pot is potentiometer. Actually, it's showing up. Good. So you've got three pins coming off the bottom. In a schematic, it looks like this. You've got two ends to a resistor, and then you've got a, a sweeper in the middle that changes, changes your resistance. It doesn't matter which end you hook up as long as it's consistent. You can flip them back and forth, and it's fine. One end you want to hit, hook to your positive voltage, and one side you want to hook to ground. Okay? Positive voltage on a uh, feather is 3.3 volts. So it could be 5 volts, it could be 3 volts, but what we're doing is 3.3 volts. The sweeper is the middle pin, and that's going to be your voltage out. So on your mechanical uh, pot, you're going to turn this knob. One side's going to be your positive voltage, one side's going to be ground. The middle pin is always your V out. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the positive voltage or the positive pin. It could be either either outside pin. You could flip the ground and the plus V. It doesn't matter as long as the middle one is V out. We're going to hook the positive voltage to 3.3 volts. We're going to hook the ground to ground. And we're going to hook our V out to our analog inputs on our control system. Let's start okay. with our mouth mechanism. So we got three wires. Just so happens that black I made ground, red I made uh, positive voltage, and brown is my output. So on the feather, we talked about the positive voltage is 3.3 volts. So if we look at the board, you got 3.3 volts here and 3.3 volts up here that we haven't used yet. This unlabeled one at the bottom is ground as well. You can look at the back of the feather card and it will tell you below the TX line is a ground pin. So let's use the 3.3 volts, this unmarked ground pin, and we want to sit, hook the output to analog 2 because that's the way I have my code written. So let's do that right now. Below this ground line is your analog inputs. So if this is ground, this is A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. There are six analog inputs on here. So we want A2, so you got ground, A0, A1, A2. So the third pin down from ground is A2. And we need to install that. Okay, so we have our mouth mechanism installed. Let's look at our joystick mechanism right here. In the code, I have the left right analog pot as A0 and the up down analog pot as A1. You can make it whatever you want, but if you want the code to work, you need to follow that. So this one back here is A0. Again, we have black, red, and brown follows the same rules, which is always a good tip. So we're gonna hook up black to ground red to plus 3.3 and brown to an analog zero. There's one problem. With the pins we've used, we have one 3.3 volt left and one ground left. And we have two pots left. So the way to get around that is make sure you tie both pots left into the same 3.3 volt pin both pots into the ground so they can share a pin. And then we're gonna use the two outputs on A0 and A1. So I'll walk you through this. So here are the two sets of wires left. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ground from the first one, black. We take the ground from the second one, black. And we're gonna plug them both, hopefully, into the same ground pin here, G and D. They should fit. There we go. Really crank that down. 
Okay, so they are sharing a ground pin. We're gonna take the two red wires. Those are a positive voltage. We're gonna tie those both into the last remaining 3.3 volt line up here on top, right below the reset button, RST. It took a little finagling to get them in there, but screw those down. Okay, so we have the grounds tied together, the positive voltage tied together. Now, I said the left-right pot, which is this bundle of wires. Your brown wire is going to go to A0, which is the one right below ground. So it goes ground, A0. So plug that in. Screw it down. And your up-down pot, which is this wire. So we're going to take that, and your up-down voltage out is going to go to A1. There we go. Let's take a look at where we are now. Let's talk about how these analog pots work mechanically. So you need to be able to turn the knob. So if you look at these, these pots here, you can see maybe that they have a tab here. That keeps this body from rotating. So in the 3D print, I have a tab and a hole for the, the shaft to go through. If you look on the inside here, you can see the shaft goes through and press fits into another 3D print. So you can see here we've got a 3D printed pivot right, that, allows, that allows the 3D print to rotate. And on the other side of the pivot, this bottom piece has the plastic is attached to this plastic piece here. So you can think of this top piece as being fixed. So this bar and this back of the pot is all fixed in place and the bottom one pivots and when it pivots, it turns the pot. So that's how we capture analog voltages by doing uh, hand inputs. This works the exact same way with the joystick. One side stays fixed while the other side's allowed to move. So we have our mouth input. When you solder the wires on there, make sure you put uh, shrink tubing on there. It acts as strain relief and it also keeps it from shorting out across there. To help control wires a little more, I made this bigger plate that I attached my joystick to. It helps it so when you're moving this around that the plate doesn't shift as much. And to control the wires, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the wire bundles, I put a, designed a loop in the end here. I'm going to put the wires up on top and I'm going to zip tie them down, leaving a little bit of slack for the joystick to move up and down. That way these wires are kept under control and they're not flopping all over the place. So now it's zip tied down. I'm able to move the joystick up and down, left and right, and the wires are well under control. Here's our current control system. So we have our control card with our servo output, our frame card for storing memory, our eyeball left, right, up, down joystick mechanism, and our eyelid or mouth, depending on what you use it for, uh, analog input. One very important thing from the last video that was met, brought up to my attention that I forgot to mention, uh, Chuck Hellebuck, he mentioned that powering your servos and powering your card can be good and it can be bad. The good is you're powering off one plug. If you power it off separately, you gotta have a uh, USB, micro USB for the uh, 32U4 and you have to have a five volt power supply separate for your servo card. So that's two plugs. You can make it work for one. One of the issues that he brought up, which is very good, I've run into it before. If you have a power supply, for example, a five volt, one amp power supply, if you have a bunch of servos hooked up to this card, they're gonna pull higher than one amp. If they pull higher than one amp, it's going to shut your 32U4 card off for a, a second and then it may reset itself. So everything may be working great and then suddenly it'll reset. You'll start looking at your code and you'll say, well, my code's not wrong. You'll find out it's because it's your power supply. I've had that happen once before. So if you're going to do this method where you're powering both off the same power supply, make sure you have a good size power supply hooked up to it. In my case, I have now changed to a five volt, four amp power supply. Um, it, the servos we're gonna be using are also low, low torque, so we're not gonna be pulling a ton of current. If you're using high torque servos, you wanna make sure you have a large power supply. So don't go out and try to use a one amp power supply. Um, try to get the, a bigger one, a five, uh, five volt, five amp or something like that. And then you'll know for sure that this uh, 
current issue won't be a problem. Thanks, Chuck, for the uh, for the uh, tip. So in this episode, we've covered the how in analog inputs work and also mechanically how do we create analog inputs. In the next episode, I think we'll talk about animatronics and how we get those to move around, how we get them to blink. And we'll follow that up with an episode on the basics of the code and how it runs. And when we finish that, we should have a fully animatronic eyeball that captures motion and plays it back to you. Um, hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you want to follow along, subscribe down below uh, and you'll be alerted the next time I upload an episode. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll be glad to try to answer them. Um, pros, cons, whatnot. Like I said, Chuck gave a good suggestion last week that I mentioned today that's very important. So if you see anything that could be improved, please let me know. Um, you can also contact me on Twitter. I'll put that in the information below. Be glad to hear from you. See you next time, guys.